All right, let's tackle part B now. Derive the magnitude of the acceleration of block two. Express your answer in terms of m1, m2, and g. And like always, try to pause the video and see if you can work through it yourself. We already worked through part one, or part A, I should say, based on this diagram above, and there's a previous video. So now we're ready to do part B. And we've already drawn the free body diagrams, which will help us determine the acceleration of block two. Let's just think about what the acceleration is first. We know it's going to accelerate downwards because there's a couple of ways you can think about it. The weight of block two is larger than the weight of block one. They're connected by the string. So we know we're going to accelerate downwards on the right-hand side and upwards on the left-hand side. The other way you think about it is the weight of block two is larger than the upward force of tension. And the weight of block one is less than the, the tension pulling upwards. And so you're going to accelerate upwards on the left-hand side, accelerate downwards on the right-hand side. And a key realization is the magnitude of the acceleration is going to be the same, because they're connected by that string. So the acceleration, I'll just draw it a little bit away from the actual dot. So if the acceleration here has a magnitude a, it's going to go in the downward direction. The acceleration on the left-hand side is going to be the same magnitude but it's going to go in the upwards direction. So that just gives us a sense of things. And so say they say derive the magnitude of the acceleration of block two. All right, so this is, let me leave the labels up there. So this is block two up here. And we know from Newton's second law that if we pick a direction, and the direction that matters here is the vertical direction. All the forces are acting in the, either the upwards or downwards direction. So the magnitude of our net forces, and we care about the vertical dimension here, is going to be equal to the mass times the acceleration in that, in that dimension, in that direction, I guess you could say. And so let's just think about block two. Block, block two. And since the acceleration we know is downwards, and we want to figure out what A is, let's just assume that positive positive magnitude specifies downwards. So what are the net forces? Well, the net forces are going to be the force of weight minus the tension. And that's going to be positive if we think about it from in, in the downward direction, the downward direction being positive. So we're going to have m2g, the weight, minus the tension. The tension is going against the weight, minus the tension, is going to be equal to the mass, is going to be equal to m2 times times our acceleration. And we need to figure out what that acceleration is going to be. So let me do that same blue color. Times the acceleration. Now we could divide both sides by m2, but that's not going to help us too much just yet, because then we would have solved for acceleration in terms of m2, <laughs> m2 g, and t. We don't have any m1s here, and we don't. So we're not solving in terms of m1, m2, and g. We're solving in terms of m2, t, and g. So somehow we have to get rid of this t. And what we can do to get rid of the t is set up a similar equation for block one. Block one. Block one. Here, since we're concerned with magnitude, and, and especially the magnitude of acceleration, and here the acceleration is going in the upward direction, we could say that the upward direction is the positive direction. And so we could say that t minus, we know that the tension is larger than the weight, t minus m1g is going to be equal to, is equal to m1, is going to be equal to m1 times the magnitude of the acceleration. And to be clear, these magnitudes are the same. And we already know that the magnitudes of the tension are the same. And now we have two equations with two unknowns. And so if we can eliminate the tension, we could solve for acceleration. And we can actually do that by just adding the left-hand side to the left-hand side and the right-hand side to the right-hand side. You learned this probably first in, in Algebra 1. If if this is equal to that and that is equal to that, if we add the, the left side to the left side and the right side to the right side, well, we're still going to get two things that are equal to each other. So when you add the left the left hand sides, what are you going to get? So you're going to get m m2g m2g minus m1g 
minus m1g. And then you're going to get t minus t. These two are going to cancel out. So let me just cross them out. So that was convenient. Is going to be equal to m2a is going to be equal to m2a plus m1a plus m1 times a. And now we just need to solve for a. And how do we do that? Well, we could factor out an a uh, out of this right hand side here. So this is going to be m2g minus m1g is equal to, let's factor out an a, a times times m2 plus m1. And now to solve for a, we just divide both sides by m2 plus m1. m2 plus m1, m2 plus m1. And there you have it, we get a is equal to a is equal to this. And notice we have solved it, we have solved for a in terms of we have solved for a in terms of m1, m2, and g. And this is the, the magnitude of the acceleration of either block one or block two. Now some of you might be thinking, wait, there, there might be an easier way to think about this problem. And I went straight from the free body diagrams, which is, you know, it's, it's implied that this is the way to tackle it uh, using the tension. But another way to tackle it, you could have said, well, this would be analogous. It's not the exact same thing, but it would be analogous to imagine two, these two blocks floating in space. So this is M2 here. And I'm not going to use pulleys here. So that's M2. And it's connected by a massless string to M1, which has a smaller mass, M1. And let's say that you are pulling on pulling in the rightward direction, now we're just drifting in space, with a force of m2g. We're not necessarily, you know, we just care about the magnitude here. And I know you might be saying, wait, okay, is this the gravitational field or whatever else? But I'm just saying, no, let's just say you're pulling in this direction with a force that happens to be equal to m, that has a magnitude of m2g. And let's say you're pulling in this direction with a force that has a magnitude of m one m one g now this isn't exactly the same as our as where we started where we started we saw what I've just kind of drawn but I have it in the presence of a gravitational field and I have it wrapped around those pulleys and then the gravitational field is providing these forces but let's just assume just for simplicity that that you're drifting in space and you're pulling on m2 to the right with a force that's equivalent to m2 g and you are pulling to the left on m1 with a force of m1 g well you could just view this as one big, you could just view the M1, the string, and M2 as just one combined mass. You could just view this as one combined mass of M1 plus M2. And you could say, all right, well, from that one combined mass, I am, whoops, on that one combined mass, I am, I am pulling to the right with a magnitude of M2g, and I am pulling to the left, let me make that in a slightly different color so you can see it, and I am pulling to the left with a magnitude of m1g, and now this becomes a pretty straightforward thing. What would be the acceleration here? Well, you could say the net, the net magnitude of the force, or the magnitude of the net force, it would be m2g, we'll take the rightward direction as the positive direction, m2g minus m1g, minus m1g, and then, so that's the net force in the right direction, the magnitude of the net force in the rightward direction, and then you divide it by its mass and you're gonna get acceleration. Force divided by mass gives you acceleration. So you divide that by our mass, which is going to be, which is going to be m1 plus m2, that's going to give you your acceleration. So you could view this as a simpler way of thinking about it, but they notice either of them give you the exact same answer. And that's one of the fun things about science. As long as you do, do logical things, you get to the same point.